We know that George Floyd's murder has had a big impact on the lives of many people. Christian Cordero talked with a psychologist who has helped people process what has happened in our community over the past year. As the sun rises on one year since George Floyd's murder, one year since the Twin Cities changed forever, there is promise of a new dawn, but its warmth has not yet set in. How are you doing a year later? How do you feel like we are doing collectively as a community? I think we are, we're in a space where we can't be sure what is happening. It's Dr. Bravada Garrett Akansanya, Dr. B's job to help people understand their mental health. She's noticed a heightened sense of anxiety, people saying they feel shaky, inattentive, losing their sleep or their appetite, despite the verdict in some ways because of it. People are just waiting for the other shoe to drop. So if I'm feeling it and I understand what's going on, I just wonder how other community members are feeling how their children are feeling. Especially communities of color. We don't have faith that the, this one incident is, of justice is creating a trend or a pattern that will undo or begin the unraveling of what we've experienced for, for centuries. We live in a world right now, Dr. B, where we want quick answers. We're willing, people say that they're willing to do the work, but they want a clear answer. Yeah, and that's not gonna be possible. It's going to take generations and uh, generations upon generations before we can all feel safe together. As familiar chants echoed in the streets last summer, there was a new kind of awakening. This feels different from every other movement. This feels like it's it, right? This has got to be it for people to understand for lasting, um, significant, meaningful change. Do you feel that way? I do. And I think it's because it went past Minnesota. It went past America. It went to the world. And because of media, thank goodness for media, it was in real time. And people, Minnesotans of which more than 80% are white, saw it through her eyes, through the eyes of her brother, her sister, her mother, her father. The issue of race in that moment as salient as it was, was not superseded, superseded by the fact that we are human beings. That is what made this difference. Rising from the trauma of the past year is the emergence that black women in particular are owed credit for the leadership they have carried through generations. One of the things that happens with black women is we are very strategic in our actions. We are very, uh, intelligent in our way of intervening in systems. And so it is fitting that the movement embedded in this moment started with Darnella Frazier, who held her phone steady when she saw something that didn't seem right. There's almost a, a synchronicity to the fact that in the universe, as the world is changing, that that lens on our oppression was held by a young black girl. Darnella cried during testimony saying she wished she did more recognition that there is more left to do in minneapolis christian cordero wcco four news All right. you know we heard that over and over again on the stand from different people who witnessed mm -hmm. this and it is heartbreaking to think that people who did nothing other than witness or in Darnella's case, I mean, she, some are saying she should get a Pulitzer Prize mm -hmm. because her video is what unlocked the truth of what happened in that moment. Mm -hmm. But every single person said, I wish we had done more. And I you wish think, we wow. had done more. Right. And yeah. I, you know, it's interesting as she says, you know, this is going to take time. You look at it, it took us generations to get where we are. It will take us generations to get where we want to be. But we're starting to have these conversations and have been having these conversations over the past year. So. Appreciate Dr. B and her perspective mm. there. We are